happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, I'm excited. Today is my uh, live stream with the clubhouse. I so look forward to this, so I'm really uh, pumped up about that. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, I've been out running this morning, doing, not running, um, taking care of stuff. I delivered a bunch of boxes of books to the loading dock again and uh, had to make a quick stop at Trader Joe's. And uh, I really love at Trader Joe's. It's really great. They got somebody out there constantly cleaning all the carts. I, I don't use a cart when I go there. I just carry one of my own bags and just load things in that and then empty them out for them to do the do what they got to do to add it up. But um, tip this down just a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about other things to do. Um, I've got an, something I'm going to do tomorrow that's real different from anything I've done on, on this uh, channel before. Um, and it's something that we just did that's really cool. So that's, that's tomorrow. Um, but I was thinking about this today. And, um, you know, every time I'm you know, talking to the guys in the band and stuff, there's always memories that come welling back because we've been together, like we've said, over 50 years. And... Um, so one of the things I thought, the thing I thought I'd do today is I was going to visit um, Russ Kunkel's first wife, Leah Kunkel. Um, and I wrote down a whole bunch of little info because Leah is really quite special and a really unique individual. And uh, I was really, I'm still in touch with her. You know, I still just absolutely adore her. She's, she's really one incredible lady. Um, but she was, um, her her, her birth name was Leah Cohen, and she um, was uh, Mama Cass's sister, younger sister, um, Mom, Cass Elliot from the Mamas and the Papas. And I remember going up to Cass's house to visit with them and uh, hanging out up there in the hills. It was <clears throat> a really amazing, amazing time. Um, she, she and Russ got married back in 1968, which is, I think, the year that I actually saw Russ for the first time when he was in a band called Things to Come uh, playing in L.A. And I think I was in a band at that time called Little John Farm. It was just before Wolfgang. And um, it was really cool. Now, when, when Cass passed away in 1974, um, Russ and Leah took custody of her daughter, Owen, and raised her, and then they had a son themselves uh, named Nathaniel. I've known Nate since he was born, and Nate uh, grew up to be one of the finest engineers in the business. I think he studied um, deeply at the side of George Massenburg, who was one of the truly remarkable um, engineers in this business. And, um, and Nate's done all kinds of things, but I've done so many projects with him. And I still think like when I'm working with Russ and we're working with Nate to hear Nate go, uh, Dad, could you go around the Toms one more time? It still blows my mind. Um, but Nate's very cool, really a good guy and a gifted, gifted and brilliant guy. As a matter of fact, when we just did Kate Taylor's um, album a couple of months ago, Nate was engineering that. And uh, so that was that was really fun to be back with him. Um, Leah did a lot of background vocal work. I, I made some notes there. She sang back up on albums with Jackson Brown, Stephen Bishop, Carly Simon, Arla Guthrie, Art Garfunkel, James Taylor. So she was one of the staple singers, not the staple singers, but a staple singer here uh, on, on the scene here. And then she got a record deal, and we went in the studio in 1979, and uh, Russ produced her album. They were still married at the time. Um, but eventually, um, she did a whole bunch of different kinds of projects, um, but ended up studying law and moved back east. And she's been a member of the bar for many, many, many years now. And um, uh, I think she, I think she really focused on entertainment law. Um, but. Uh, She's that kind of a tenacious personality, you know, that can really, I think she's probably perfect in this, but still singing, still going out and doing gigs and stuff. But this is, you know, her, her, her real job was, is as a lawyer. Um, but on, on this album, uh, I'm going to um, 
I'm going to play three songs from this. The, the, the who's who of musicians on this album from 79 is really pretty remarkable. Um, got William Smitty Smith on keyboards. Um, William passed a long time ago, and he was just one of the greatest players. A, a, a weird side story with, with Smitty was I went to his funeral, and um, when I arrived, I sat down, and this guy came in and sat down next to me. And I almost, as they say, shit my pants. Because unbeknownst to me, I had no idea that Smitty had an identical twin brother. And I suddenly, I'm at a funeral for a guy, and I look next to me, and he's sitting there. And it completely blew my mind. And then we started talking, and I found out what was going on. I was quite, quite relieved at that point. I was about to have an out of mind, out of my pants experience. It was, it was pretty far out. Um, so we got Smitty on, on keys. Um, Matt Murphy also playing keys and, and, and strings on this. Steve Lukather, Doug Livingston, Danny Korchmar, uh, John Jarvis on keys, a great Jim Horn on sax, Dan Dugmore, Andrew Gold, uh, Joe Farrell on sax, uh, Lenny Castro on percussion. Um, oh, God, Stephen Bishop was on this. Uh, and then on background vocals, they had Rose, the great Rosemary Butler, Jackson Brown, uh, Renee Armand, who I did her stuff with at the same period, and Penny Nichols. Um, so it, it's, a, it's really amazing, and the, the, some beautiful, beautiful piano work by Craig Durge, because this was a period when, like, the section was really doing a lot of stuff for people, so it became very logical doing Leah's record that uh, Craig and Cooch and myself and Russ would be on it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play a couple of songs of Leah's here for you today. And uh, this is 1979, and this was her self-titled album, Leah Kunkel. So here, here we go. Almost turned it off instead of hitting. Oh, Some things never change, Jesus. Feelings there. Oh, God, I wish it would start on the downbeat. I never bother with asking around. He's been gone too long to care. I really thought I'd show. Jim Horn on flute. Anyone with a broken heart could see the reason why. So step right up if you want to see me cry. I'd like to see you doing better than me if your baby said goodbye. Now if you're thinking that. Thank you. 
just a real pure voice, really great feel, great band. It was such a great period. It was really kind of like some of the golden age of recording here in Los Angeles. Um, it was always live band. Everybody was there working. And it was like a lot of, a lot of juices flowing in the room, which was really special. I missed that part of it. Um, uh, here's another song called Don't Leave These Goodbyes. And um, let me see. Yeah, this one is really simple. It's just Craig Durge on, on piano and organ and Doug Livingston on acoustic guitar, myself and Russ, Kung, Russ is playing drums and overdub kungas on this. And Leah's um, playing a, a acoustic piano on this one. And Penny Nichols is singing background with her. So here we go. This one is called Don't Leave These Goodbyes. <laughs> some real element of James Taylor in there. Some of those changes are very James-esque from that period also. Um, Frankenstein on this album. I've gotten so much use out of that piece of lumber. It's just, it's unbelievable. Um, I love that bass, so. And it just, it records so beautifully. And also, man, live, it sounds great. But I don't take it on the road anymore. I don't play any live gigs with it. I do not trust 
what goes on on the road in terms of gear. So I never take anything out that can't be replaced. Um, I, I'm just not that, not that trusting of a soul. So it stays right here or it goes with, in my hand to the studio and that's it. So one more song. Um, and it's, uh, if you look her up, it's Leah, L-E-A-H, and last name K-U-N-K-E-L, Kunkel. And um, she's, she's quite a hoot, quite a character. So um, this, this, this song, I'm not sure, maybe, I'm wondering if Bishop wrote this song. This feels so Stephen Bishop. Let me see if it's got any information on here. Uh, hold on one sec. Um, no, it's not showing composer on that. Really feels like, uh, I don't know, I'll look it up or somebody will look it up and just tell me what the hell's going on here. I don't know anything, but this is called Under the Jamaican Moon. It's really a fun track. So here we go. <laughs> cowbell, a stapler will do the job.
under the Jamaican moon. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying, you know, it would, I've said this before, it would be so easy for me just to sit here and do, you know, the James Taylor, Jackson Brown, you know, Lyle Lovett, Phil Collins, um, all the Linda Ronstadt, all these ones. I really love being able to bring out other projects that people wouldn't be necessarily familiar with. And it was really great yesterday with Lathe. Um, how many people totally were digging him and said, oh man, I'm going to go buy that album. I got to find this guy. He's great. And he was so tickled, man. He immediately wrote and said, I can't believe you put the thing up, you know, with our session and stuff on it. And it's just great to, to share all kinds of music and all kinds of artists because there's so many things, so many things I've worked on over the years that to me deserve so much attention. Um, not because I was on them, but just because they were pretty damn good artists. Um, and you just wish, you know, people would get to hear it. So I'm going to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, dis rediscovering artists like that. And some I'll play along with um, on busy days like this. I just, you know, didn't have time to kind of sit and suss one of the songs out to play it again. Um, especially, um, it's only a little while before I have to go in and log in and get the clubhouse set up for the live stream today. And, uh, and as a teaser, like I said, tomorrow's going to be a little bit different and uh, some good stories with this one. And, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to wish everybody a great day. For those of you who come and coming to the live stream, I will see you there in, uh, in a couple of hours. And um, for those that aren't, I will see you tomorrow. And, and again, stay safe. Just stay safe. Huh? I'm sitting here just anxiously awaiting when vaccines become available and where, where I am. Um, I'm in the age group, but they haven't started. I, they're still just doing um, first responders. Not, not first responders, but frontline people, still the healthcare workers and uh, all all kinds of people, and, and for me, that uh, it's easier for me to sit and and hide from everything, as compared to what those people go through. So they definitely should be at the front of the line um, to be taken care of. And uh, but I'm anxious for the moment when I can. I have no qualms about going in and and getting my shots and uh, starting to feel some semblance of. I'm not going to say normalcy because that's going to be a long time before whatever normal is going to be is going to is going to be, um, but just to have just you know that weight slightly lifted of anxiety about every time you walk out the door what's going on to to have the vaccine will make a big difference in that outlook and still you know going to hold on doing masks and stuff even after getting that uh, until it's you know, a big enough chunk of the population has, uh, has done it. And we can feel a whole lot safer then. It's been a re remarkably bizarre period in history. This past year, you just kind of sit and you go, now it's like we went through a wormhole into an alternate universe and somehow the world we lived in is cruising over here and we're sitting over here in this other parallel lane, but just like, it was like in the old Superman comics when they would go to Bizarro World, and it was kind of like your world, but really backwards and upside down and bizarre. Um, and this just has a feeling um, in that in that realm. So, so s stay safe. That's all I can ever emphasize: is try to stay safe for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your community, and for humanity. Because this is a battle going on everywhere. I just talked to friends in the UK this morning, and it's back rampant over there again, apparently. So I have a lot of friends over there, so my heart's with all of you, too. Not the band, you, you people. So, and thank you every day to all of the, uh, the frontline healthcare workers that every night on the news when they show what's going on in the hospitals, I don't know how these people do it, that, that are strength and tenacity and 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 heroics is really quite beyond comprehension and i so appreciate them so take good care i'll see a bunch of you hopefully uh in, in a couple of hours and um otherwise i will see whoever else there is uh tomorrow and uh look forward to that so take good care i'm going to hit this button right in front of me it's on i'm on my phone here this is my phone right here 
So I'm going over here to the button and saying bye-bye.